Before we get into Storm Babette and the potential of upwards of 200 millimetres of rain falling during the middle and second half of this week, we will look at the chill that we've seen over the weekend, a stark contrast, of course, to last weekend. Thanks for clicking on to the Monday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. Hope everybody is well, enjoyed their weekend, back to the grind of the work week, of course, and another week um, certainly will not be born in terms of weather-wise, that's for sure. Uh, we've seen quite a significant amount of rain, especially central and northern areas of the British Isles, as well as across parts of Ireland through the you know first half of October. And it looks as if we are going to see further heavy rainfall over the next seven days. So I think this month will wind up, um, you know, at or slightly above average uh, temperature wise. But in terms of rainfall, I think this is going to turn out to be a rather wet October overall. So, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens through the remainder of this month um, as we go uh, forward here Catesbridge this was temperatures yesterday morning by the way not this morning but uh, yesterday minus 3.1 at Catesbridge S Del Muir in Dumfries and Galloway minus 3.2 minus 4 was the coldest spot in the UK low level cold that is at Shap Summit and minus 0 0.1 or minus 0 0.9 sorry at uh, Cinebridge wouldn't be a video if I didn't muck up my line some way <laughs> uh, yeah frustration um that is for sure um this was the temperatures for this morning across the continent so yeah we are starting to see um autumn if not a little taste of winteriness as we go through the middle um, portion of the month now of course we had a very very warm start to october across many areas of not just the uk and ireland but across the majority of the continent but we are gradually starting to see colder air coming south and uh, you know, feeling just that little bit more seasonal compared to what we've had last weekend. By the way, we had temperatures, of course, stuck in mid single figures across the north under very heavy rainfall. Of course, we've seen uh, locally upwards of 200 millimeters of rain falling within a 40 hour period. Very dry start to October across the south, but we are starting to see um, the rain totals mount up here. But of course, we had temperatures into the mid 20s. Uh, you know, across the southeast of England for four straight days, and um, have to go back to uh, quite a few decades. The last time we've seen that during the month of October, I think it was nineteen fifty nine. The last time we've seen four straight days of twenty five or higher in the UK during the month of October. But this was the temperatures, um, you know, this morning across the British Isles, and you can see here quite a widespread frost. Uh, nothing exceptional, but uh, you know, a little bit more typical of what you would expect um for the time of the year of course the man julian oscillation we will look at Baba babette in just a second here but this is the dynamic model indicating that the mjo has uh, kind of went into phases one and then kind of going into phases eight and then of course if we look at the, this particular chart here you can see the upward motion over africa but we do see a change taking place as we go through now this is a a 40-day 40, 40 forecast uh, between the 16th of October and the 25th of November. You can see here how we've got upward motion over Africa. We've got sinking over the central Indian Ocean through the maritime continent. We've got a little bit of uh, upward motion over the central Pacific. So that is a phase eight in the one of the MJO. But notice here as we play through the time period here, we start to see a shift to sinking over Africa an upward motion over the Indian Ocean and the maritime continent. So that indicates to me that the modeling is seeing the MJO going towards the warmer phases of uh, three, four, five, and six of the MJO as we press towards the end of this month and into early November, which is a little bit of a contradiction to what was shown in the video on Saturday, indicating the potential of a, of, you know, a favorable MJO negative NAO, negative AO, it just shows you how difficult it is when you start to get into the longer range, especially when you're talking about, you know, tropical influence, tropical force and, uh, you know, uh, warmth getting lifted into the high latitudes. And of course, the buckling of the jet models have a hard time pinpointing exactly how to distribute that heat 
into a colder environment across the far north of the planet. So the Arctic Oscillation firmly negative, expected to go back towards the neutral line, but notice the spread in the models. Some take it way down to minus four sigma. We've also got a uh, plus three sigma. So take your pick. Once that um, Arctic Oscillation uh, that is firmly negative at the moment, it goes back towards neutral. Take your pick for the second half of October where that um where that signal is going to go of course it doesn't drive anything in particular just uh, it basically indicates the pressure pattern across the polar region here of course the uh, positive arctic oscillation is lower pressure across the top of the pole higher pressure further south generally means westerly winds and milder conditions when you've got the opposite you've got higher pressure over the arctic region lower pressure further south that displaces the jet stream further south uh, generally a cooler pattern but also more unsettled further south and we, we do have that situation that's upcoming week and we'll look at that in a second this is the NAO signal here indicating again like the Arctic Oscillation firm negative it uh, drifting gradually up towards the neutral line but again quite a spread in the models here so that there is high levels of uncertainty this tells me that there's high levels of uncertainty in terms of the distribution of that warmth from tropics, subtropics, up towards the, the temperate regions and even the high latitude region here. This is a look at the jet stream chart here. This is a global view of the GFS, by the way. And you can see here something rather interesting. Very difficult to see, uh, I, I get that, and I do apologize for that. But notice here, we've got quite a split jet across the North Atlantic at the moment here. We've got uh, a jet stream coming off North America here. We've actually got two branches of the jet, and then we've also got a branch of the jet going all the way up into the northwest um, of Canada here. What that's doing is it's forcing colder air southwards here, but increasing with that imbalance between warmth in the tropics, colder across Hudson Bay. We've got that jet stream in between. But we've also got, of course, an area of high pressure over the North Atlantic at the moment, hence why we're seeing with low pressure to the east, high pressure to the west. That discharge of the, the first taste of Arctic air coming south through the course of the weekend. Very different story, of course, the last weekend when we had that big contrast in temperature over the UK, chilly in the north, very warm in the south. But that area of high pressure over the North Atlantic is splitting the jet. One piece going north, west coming out of Greenland and Iceland. Remember, I've said there's a, been a wee bit of a breeding ground areas of low pressure coming in from a northwest direction. But we've also got quite a, a, a southward displaced area of jet stream winds and low pressure systems. Once we play through the list, this loop, by the way, this 940 millibar low just to the east of Japan. Notice here there's a strong arm of jet stream winds, quite flat, quite zonal. This was the remnants of Super Typhoon Bolivon, Bolivon, I think it is. This here is transporting quite a lot of heat northwards increasing the strength of the jet but if we play through this loop folks let's see if i can get it a little bit closer up to see a better view of this here that looks a bit better doesn't it and you can see here what's taking place so this is now that the the remnants of that super typhoon now starting to see uh, engage with the jet stream we're now starting to see with lower pressure over the aleutian islands and the Gulf of Alaska, that little dip taking place. This is almost like a skipping rope flicking it. And you've got, of course, a, a piece of the skipping rope going north. You've got a piece of the skipping rope going south. And it's the same in the atmosphere. And this allows the development of areas of low pressure. So you notice here what's taking place. This is that heat uh, getting pushed north, forcing the development of this low over the Gulf of Alaska. And then you watch this space that then creates a downstream influence over north america here notice here that the jet stream is getting lifted northwest up into canada that is forcing colder south but it's also forcing the jet stream to exit north america almost across north florida uh, south carolina north carolina and then this sets the wheels in motion for our weather as we push towards the middle portion of the week, look at the strength of the jet stream now exit North America. Notice it here, uh, another piece of that uh, jet stream wind, much slower than the, the new branch coming off North America. And notice here, that's getting forced northwards here. And then, of course, you've got a system that we're then going to be 
um, watching very carefully during the second half of this week here. So quite a dynamic situation, but I'm trying to show you what's taking place here to then recast the atmosphere and and uh, and and seeing this system coming out of the uh, you know the region of Biscay and then it's going to drift northwards. But it's also forcing the area of high pressure that we've got at this moment in time over the UK to then get forced up towards Scandinavia. And of course, this is the hallmarks of that phase eight in one of the Malanjulian oscillation. Uh, that tends to favour more Scandinavian or Icelandic high pressure, a, a, a southward displaced jet stream. And of course, you've got the overall um, uh, pattern here. So you notice here the strong jet stream crossing over the North Atlantic. But of course, we've got an area of high pressure strong at that across um, Scandinavia. So if we look at another view here, let's have a look at the, the GFS here. And look at the Europe, North America, uh, North Atlantic pattern. Sorry, you can see here this will be eventually Babette. What takes place is we've got an area of high pressure elongated between the northern UK all the way down to the Balkan region here. So this kind of stretched out um, area of high pressure uh, to the north of it over northern Finland, northwest Russia. We've got a fairly deep area of low pressure dragging in some colder air from the north here. And then, of course, we've got this system. That is kind of trapped underneath that area of high pressure that is kind of sitting in place at the moment but it's the effects that we see from the tropical region all the way up towards the north pacific what takes place over the north pacific then reshapes the pattern over north america and eventually downstream of that we see the changes taking place over europe so a fascinating evolution of the new pattern taking shape this week over the British Isles and we of course have Storm Babette named by the Met Office here and it's more so going to be about rainfall as opposed to strength of wind. So as we play through this loop you can see exactly what takes place. This system isn't going anywhere in particular we've got a piece of energy running ahead of the actual main center of low pressure. You notice here that we're starting to see uh, the trough becoming a little bit more elongated across the North Atlantic up towards Greenland here. Notice here that that area of low pressure is now pushing eastwards and that is forcing with all this energy here over the North Atlantic up to, down towards Iberia, up towards France. All this energy is then getting forced east, northeast and that is of course going to set the wheels in motion there's the development of that Scandinavian high starting to uh, build here. It was highlighted here in the channel early last week and late last week, in fact. And, of course, the overall pattern is changing thanks to what is taking place over the North Pacific here, helped by the Manjulian Oscillation and further reinforced by that recurving West Pacific Typhoon here. That is what's forcing the pattern to change over this region of the world and of course as storm babette slowly lifts north northeast we're going to see um, multiple frontal systems associated with this area of low pressure become kind of stuck in place and the reason why is we've got that area of high pressure over scandinavia that's kind of slowing down the process the progress northwards of this uh, system here hence why the met office are so concerned about the rainfall totals course we've got that kind of east southeasterly wind thanks to the differential and pressure between the low to the south and high strong high over Scandinavia then that fo focuses a very strong east to southeasterly wind over given areas now of course areas that are susceptible to that moist uh, southeasterly wind we're going to see heaviest rainfall totals east and southeast northern Ireland eastern portions of Scotland possibly northeastern England over the 48 to 72 hour time frame, we could see upwards of 150 to 200 millimeters of rain falling. And of course, the ground is already saturated. So rainfall is going to be a concern mid to late this week. And it's all thanks to that area of high pressure over Scandinavia that's slowing the whole process down. So we've got a very dynamic, interesting weather pattern to come this week. We will look at the details further down the road here probably in tomorrow's video so stay tuned for that be sure to like share and subscribe and i also received 
A very kind donation. Super thanks. So thank you, Croft Cam, for that. Bye.